Hey everyone, how's it going today? So in this short video, I'm going to be discussing some elements of welding, but uh, using this little machine that plugs into a 20 amp circuit. Um, the box says that you can weld up to 316s and I wouldn't really put it past, uh, you know, that sort of thickness in the sense that these machines typically have 20% duty cycle. The arcs that are generated by these machines are fairly small. So if you're going to be welding on really thick material, then you're sort of fighting against the um, effects of, uh, you know, a fast freezing puddle versus really cold material and a small arc. Um, that being said, can you weld with these machines? Absolutely. But they are more geared towards lighter gauge materials just because, again, you're not getting as much preheat. Um, and I'll show you why, actually. Like, I have a couple example welds. Uh, this one was just on some one-eighth angle. But this one particularly, you know, one can say that these welds don't really look all that great. Um, and it's true, like, you know, it's only an example. But you can see how, when you're looking at the uh, bead itself, how it doesn't really tie in as well into the parent material. You can always sense that uh, just by looking at it, it seems like the weld bead itself is just sort of piling up upon itself, or even, you know, in this case, it's piling up upon itself, but not really tying into the parent material. And you can see that just by looking at the toes of the weld, how they don't really blend in, and even the edges seem a little bit steep uh, relative to, you know, something like this, where the toe is actually blend in a little easier like there's that nicer transition uh going into the parent material so that's something you want to expect with uh using these little welding machines you can still apply the technique of oscillating the arc back and forth to increase preheat but the reality is is that those arcs are quite small and therefore the preheat going into you know three eighths material isn't really enough to allow that puddle to tie in, right? And that's basically the effect is that you don't really have enough current and thus not enough melt through. Ideally, a puddle like this or a bead like this should look a little more flatter. Instead, this one kind of looks a little more taller. And again, there's a lot of uh, lack of fusion despite, you know, the best intentions of, uh, you know, welding. So here's an example of welding too slow. The effect is that the arc is actually just sitting on top of the puddle and the welding wire is melting into the puddle. Uh, and then you would actually notice that the infill becomes too wide um, as a result of dragging the torch too slow. So the effect is that you're not getting any penetration into the material itself and that puddle is just sitting on top of the material instead of washing out. So in this example, you have a standard stringer being formed as the torch is being dragged along the material. And in essence, the arc is just gonna be at the leading edge of the puddle so that all that preheat is primarily focused into the parent material. And then all you really have to do is watch for the infill of the puddle. Uh, you can basically make that puddle narrower by going faster or wider if you go slower. And that's, that's about it. So here's an example of weaving. The arc is just being moved back and forth. And it's still a matter of watching the infill of the puddle. Uh, you still want to maintain a uniform profile uh, from one side of the weld to the other. The benefit of doing this kind of weld technique is creating a little more preheat in the weld zone. And um, that basically allows for better washing of the puddle into the parent material. And that's about it. Now another comment to make is that you can also control how wide or how narrow those weaves are based on how close or how far that arc is. 
Um, the only catch is that uh, you don't want to have that arc too close to the previous puddle. Otherwise, you're just going to be feeding wire into the puddle and not creating enough preheat necessarily. So there's a fine balance uh, to be considered. So here are some example welds. Um, this one here looks a little bit taller and wider than this one. And that's because I kept the arc itself um, not at the leading edge. I kept it up here. And so the wire kept melting into the puddle itself. And that's the kind of profile you're getting. If you were going to progress that torch um, in a you know fairly quick manner or a reasonable manner, then this is the profile you would get. Um, the arc itself is on the leading edge of the puddle and that ensures that you actually have more preheat or as much preheat as you can going into the parent material. And then if you have a look at the weave profile, um, this one looks a little more flatter than the uh, other two. And that's just a condition of creating more preheat into the parent material because you're concentrating that heat into a sort of narrow area. And that's creating the condition for the puddle to tie in a little easier into the parent material. So looking at it from the top, this weld looks a little more flatter than this one and definitely this one. So that's basically it. Okay, so here's one example of the simple weave profile or your stacking of dimes. Uh, to get a look like this, um, it's all sort of touchy-feely by the end of the day, but um, the torch angle should be at 45 degrees. Your backhand would be around 20 degrees to allow for a field of view between the uh, previous puddle and the arc moving forward. Um, but basically whenever you're doing something like this, you can actually adjust how close the individual puddle is to the previous bead, uh, based on how close or how far the arc is away from that puddle. Uh, that being said, you don't really want that arc to be going into the puddle because then you're not penetrating into the parent material, right? Like your arc is always going to be the hottest part of your weld zone. Um, that being said, the arc itself is quite small and the material is thick and then you're kind of playing with the freezing effect of 035 wire. So a look like this is more of an aesthetic on one hand, but on another hand, when you're weaving that arc, you're actually creating a little more preheat into the weld zone itself, or at least into the parent material. It's a lot different if you're just going to do a single pass. Um, and then I'll just show that example as well. But, um, you know, a look like this is almost done out of necessity because your simple solid wire welding is a lot colder than your flux core or metal core. And, uh, you know, that's kind of it. So. So just a final comment on uh, the arc size is this. I mean, in the welding video, you would normally see an orb of light that's, you know, yay size with a puddle trailing behind, which is, of course, the uh, case of welding. But if you're ever going to compare the size of arc between a little welding machine in relation to a... Uh, uh, a larger walling machine, such as your three-phase, 100% duty cycle, this is what you'd find. The wall, you know, the um, the machine that plugs into the wall produces an arc that's about that size. And then a machine that uh, you would find in a shop setting generally produces an arc that size. So there's always an application for these walling machines. Uh, the little one that plugs into the wall is always best suited for 
you know, some small repair work. You know, if you have something that broke in the backyard or if you just want to practice some welding, then, you know, go for it. But, uh, you know, whether you want to complete some multi-passes on something is another question. So ultimately, there's always an application to be considered for these uh, types of machines. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I think I'm going to leave the video with that. So if you have any questions or comments, let me know. And then uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.